Eternal vigilance is the price of liberty. As the vast western frontier opened to settlement, the forces of law and order rested with a few dedicated men, men with a belief in the ideals of liberty with justice for all, a willingness to fight for those ideals with deadly accuracy with the weapons they used. They were the top guns of the West. Today, our frontiers stretch continually outward and upward to the far shores of the oceans of the world and to the fringes of space. The free world is an oceanic coalition bound together militarily and economically by the sea. Most of our trade, as well as our allies, are across those seas, all of our potential enemies. Therefore, the survival of our nation and the free world, now and in the future, depends upon our free use of these oceans and the air above them for lawful commerce. The hard-riding keepers of the peace in this infinite frontier are the men of the Navy's Air Forces, prepared for defense or instant retaliation in any quarter of the globe. They are the top guns of the space age. Today, the top guns of the Navy are gathered at Yuma, Arizona at the Marine Corps Auxiliary Air Station to prove their skills and their weapons in the fourth annual Naval Air Weapons Meet. The purpose of the meet? To promote the training incentive and competitive spirit essential to combat readiness in peacetime and to provide official recognition of individuals and teams for top honors in the employment of air weapons. Concurrently, it affords naval aviation an opportunity to evaluate its weapon systems, supporting equipments, and training techniques under conditions simulating all-out combat operation. There are four major areas of competition. They are light attack, heavy attack, all-weather fighter, and day fighter. For the first time in a Navy weapons meet, Ground location and airborne television cameras will take you on operational missions. You will ride in partnership with these top guns of the Navy. Impressive as this air armada is, it is only hardware without the pilot air crew teams that give it efficiency and accuracy on an around the clock, across the calendar basis. Every man in the air and ground crew knows that he is a vital factor in every mission flown by the aircraft under his care. The high morale of these Top Gun teammates reflects the tremendous pride each individual takes in the fact that he knows that his job was done right. Plane captains, ordnance men, electronics technicians, machinist mates, metal smiths, all support personnel have a vital part in the high level of performance which has earned a consistent well done for the Air Navy. Each A4D team competing in the light attack jet event is flying a total of six missions. Medium angle loft, long range profile mission, high dive, over the shoulder loft, rockets, and conventional bombs. In the loft operation, each contestant delivers a nuclear shape. In these events, the approach to the target is made at minimum altitude. At a predetermined point, the pull-up is initiated and the pilot flies a specified profile. Following delivery, the pilot retires in the direction from which he came, diving back to the deck to gain extra speed. This method of delivery allows the pilot to clear the target area before his weapon detonates. Two point seven five FFAR rockets are used during the rocketry events. Scoring is measured at the target area by target operators and observed by the senior judge of the light attack event. 
In the AD light attack prop phase, the profile event is a long-range, low-level, time-consuming mission of 650 miles. With minor changes, the light attack prop conventional weapons missions correspond to the light attack jet events. However, generally more accurate deliveries can be expected due to lower speeds at the release points. Each A3D Sky Warrior heavy attack team will fly a total of three missions. First, pinpoint bombing, then navigation and radar bombing site runs, finally, bomber stream. Pinpoint bombing is aptly named. In it, a shape is dropped from high altitude on a ground target. Scoring depends on elapsed time and the distance of the shape from the target. The navigation and radar bombing site run is to test the navigators. Approximately 1,000 miles from takeoff, the navigator notifies a ground radar site standing by. The aircraft then proceeds to a designated radar bombing site and simulates a nuclear drop which is scored electronically. In the bomber stream operation designed to simulate a large-scale attack, the aircraft are launched at 15-minute intervals. Precise takeoff time is important. The targets are announced in minimum sufficient time to allow proper planning. In these events, the A3D's accurate bombing site and computer play a significant part. In the F4D squadrons competing in the all-weather fighter category, Competition consists of lead collision rocketry at 30,000 feet and at 50,000 feet. The Aero 36 target is towed at a speed of Mach 0.8 for the 30,000 foot events and Mach 0.9 for the 50,000 foot events. The speed of the fighter making the intercept is suggested but may be varied by the team ground control intercept controller to his best advantage. Through the use of airborne intercept radar, the firing pilot must detect and lock on the target and complete his firing run while flying his airplane without visual reference to the ground. Scoring is accomplished through photo assessing. Four types of targets are in use for top gun competition. The air to ground target area is located in the desert range near Yuma. Scoring is visual, being measured at the targets by target operators and observed by the senior judge of the event. Air-to-air -air gunnery is evaluated with conventional banner tow targets. The banner, towed by an aircraft of Utility Squadron 7, is hooked on at the head of the runway. 1,500 feet of cable is played out as the towing aircraft makes a high-angle takeoff. After the firing runs, the banner is released over a retrieval area for hit assessment. The Del Mar Aero 36 towed target, which is used to evaluate missile fire, has radar reflective and photographic scoring capabilities. The Del Mar RADOP targets are released, towed, and recovered by underwing mounted launchers. The tow reel, which controls deployment and recovery, is actuated by an internally contained wind-driven turbine. Operation Top Gun marks the first Navy use of the Ryan KDA-4 Fire Bee in a major weapons meet action. The remotely controlled, free-flying, high-performance jet targets challenge F-8U Crusader Day Fighter Squadrons and F-3H Demon All-Weather Fighter Squadrons. P-2V Neptunes and JD-1s operating from Brownfield near San Diego and Point Magoo will launch their fire bees southeast of San Nicolas Island and remote ground control at Magoo will take over target operation. A vital link in aerial interception is the ground control interceptor who vectors the aircraft to its target until lock-on can be affected by the interceptor. Then the airborne weapon system takes over the attack. The attacking pilot is vectored in when the target enters the hot leg of its on-station operation. The pilot is allowed five minutes after the target enters the firing area to get his missile away. Camera recording, telemetry, and the airborne referee will score the events. A full hit score is awarded if the missile hits the fire bee regardless of the conditions under which it was fired. The Crusaders, armed with deadly heat-seeking sidewinders, and demons carrying Sparrow III missiles meet the attack of the enemy fire bee on the inner and outer ranges of the Pacific Missile Range, 
approximately 50 miles off the Point Magoo Naval Missile Center. The exacting 30-minute interval of launches requires two simultaneous ground control operations. As the first bird is launched and begins its climb to mission altitude, the alternate ground control operator begins pre-launch checkout of the second scheduled Fire B. As the primary KDA enters the range on the first hot leg of its racetrack pattern, Fire B number two is launched and begins its climb to altitude. Crusaders vector in on the duty target and launch their sidewinders. Sparrow threes slash across the range as demons close for the kill. The next few impartial minutes are final judgment of pilots, planes, and weapons as hit or miss is recorded. As the fire bee disappears in a roaring tangle of metal or streaks for the recovery area. Mission completed, the interceptors break for home as target number two enters the range and the pattern of mock invasion continues. The primary target is guided to the recovery area. Parachute deployment is commanded. The fire bee floats gently to the surface of the sea. An HUS-1 helicopter converges on the impact area. A fish pole boom tipped with a pelican hook permits ready hook-on to the KDA riser. In a few minutes, the target is on its way to the saltwater decontamination area at Point Magoo. Immediate fresh water washdown and cleansing of individual components lengthens the life of the fire bee immeasurably, permitting many missions before expenditure. During the next few days, the shattering scream of jet engines is punctuated by the staccato chatter of 20 millimeter cannon, the crash of Mark 76 bombs, and 2.75 rockets. Sidewinders and Sparrow 3s slash across the sea range. The desert shakes under the impact of the full arsenal of air-to-ground weapons. The Navy's top gunners are riding the range high, wide, and handsome, and the scoreboard at Yuma spells out the story of their success. Finally, the smoke clears, and it's all over but the shouting. Vice Admiral Clarence E. Ekstrom, commander of the Pacific Fleet Naval Air Force, the host for Operation Top Gun, proudly sums up the record-breaking total scores. The Top Gun saga has taken its place in the annals of great frontier stories, but the keepers of the peace maintain their vigilance and their accuracy through continuous training in their skills. The outstanding success of the Fire Bee as an efficient economical target for air-to-air weapons evaluation and training has aroused the interest of the Navy in this advanced transonic Fire Bee as target support for operational training exercises in surface ships firing surface-to-air intercept missiles. The vital new role of missile ships is to establish a defensive anti-aircraft missile umbrella over task groups, freeing the total combat potential of the main force for offensive action. This new Fire Bee is a faster, more versatile and competent jet target, capable of continually challenging and evaluating the complex functions of our arsenal of offensive and defensive weapon systems. Defensively and offensively, unceasing practice under the most realistic combat conditions possible guarantees on a practical basis that all of our armament can and will fulfill its assignment against an enemy and that our free nation shall continue to exist in a free world. Thank you.